Hi lads and lasses, Modest Pelican here with GTA Online. If you enjoy this video, please write to the appropriate American government department and ask them to change the Statue of Liberty to a giant well-endowed pelican, as this really helps spread the good word of my channel. Meet Thick Man, a retired assassin who is on a mission to become the most powerful crime lord in Los Santos, whilst also ensuring he stays sufficiently hydrated at all times. These are the boys, 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 and together they form a feared gang known as the Sons of Virgins. These are their stories. Alright, we are making moves today because we're going to finalise the setup of our multinational family friendly narcotics operation. You see I'm running low on cash and I've got to generate more revenue, so I'm excited to premiere our summer marketing campaign called Crack for the Elderly. It's a no brainer as they're not only wealthy, they also have a lot of free time to smoke a little crack. First I head over to meet the lads at the casino. This is basically the designated meeting spot now because you get to spin the wheel and I'm lucky enough to win $50,000. This brings our total account balance to $50,000. I'm so poor I can't even afford to pay respects by pressing F. At least Stealth Carbo is here to lighten the mood. He's still pretending to be a 60s gangster, sort of like how I pretend that I'm not unironically pushing a communist agenda. We beat each other a little bit, but then realize together we are a far stronger force. Stealth Omato arrives in his combi van with a surfboard on the roof, but the only thing he's surfing is an impressively vast range of softcore Christian anime. We can't just stand around pranking each other though because grandma needs a fat line of freedom. So before we head to our new operation, I need to sell some coke that's been cooked up at the lab. I think it's pretty damn beautiful how many young kids play this game because it teaches them valuable life lessons. Like to never get high on your own supply and that to be a successful dealer you need to have great organisational skills and ensure you get a good night's rest. The good thing about selling to the elderly is that they'll die soon anyway and of course $126,000 in the bank. This is good money but we simply need a lot more. The lads ask if I want to see their new cars and this quickly becomes quite a hurtful exercise as they exclude me from their retro comet gang. They call me names like Red Boy and Small PP Red Boy and Annoying YouTuber Red Boy, really emotionally scarring stuff. We decide to have a quick race before we head up north, but then this raccoon mask wearing Malacca walks right up next to my car and gives me the rude finger. I proceed to shoot him in the head with my micro Uzi. I don't know what it is about this raccoon, but on second thoughts I like his energy, so I decide to invite him into the gang for a while. He seems kind of unstable, like maybe he should talk to someone, but hey, it's funny because he's a raccoon. So as you know, last episode I purchased a weed farm and it's time to get it up and running. Very exciting times. Now selling coke, well that's a victimless crime, especially to old people. Selling weed however is the devil's work as it not only makes your peenie smaller, as we've previously established, it can literally just kill you instantly. I mean I've assassinated people for money, I've killed literally thousands of innocent civilians, I've sold anything you could imagine but I never predicted that I'd become a legitimate 420 ganja salesman. It's not very Christian, but I want the money so I can buy several cars and houses that I don't really need, so I'm at peace with it. However, the biggest problem with my weed farm is that there isn't any weed, it's just an empty warehouse. Marto pretends to be a weed plant to try and make me feel better, but it's just not the same. I mean, I appreciate his thoughtfulness, but this mother can't even photosynthesize. We need actual weed and fast. I need to go and get the equipment and apparently the van is up at the old sawmill. Retrieving this van goes relatively smoothly. This guy in his scramjet did sketch us out for a moment, but I guess he was just bird watching. Besides performing dozens of pit maneuvers on the van, he never shoots his missiles, so I'll take the W. And now the weed farm has fans and soon it will have plants, we just have to wait a bit. Let's go. 
The farmers are so funny the way they nap on dirt roads like this. But then I see an opportunity to complete my life's ambition of being a sick lad. I steal this man's ute and pick up the boys. This may be the sickest stunt you'll ever see on YouTube. This is what we do here, we revolutionize the gaming world. We're like Elon Musk, but rather than launching some lame rockets to space, we launch epic boats into virtual lakes of opportunity. Mato asks if I can give him a ride to the mask shop, and so I say I'll give him a lift in my deluxo. Now as you guys know, I was the first ever prank channel on YouTube. In fact, it's widely known that I pioneered the entire prank genre. We decide to prank these guys by attaching a sticky bomb to their car, but we get the timing all wrong, and Mato just explodes one of them while they're looking directly at him. Get pranked, big girls. I give that prank a 9 out of 10. I love how the owner of this mask shop is just sipping his soy latte, not even slightly phased by the total chaos happening in front of his very eyes. You've got to respect the mask selling hustle. It turns out Mato wants to become the raccoon guy. He wants to steal his entire look, and I must say he's done well. This is blatant identity fraud, but it's hot as hell because they're raccoons. I then see him throw a sticky bomb on my car, but I pretend like I don't notice. Mato asks if we can fly out to my yacht, but I finesse him and bail just in time so that he explodes himself and not me. I rate his prank 3.5 out of 10. Alright, the weed has surely been delivered now, so it's time to go and check it out. And Carbo insists that the fastest way to get there is his scramjet. He's about as good at flying this thing as I am at obeying the 10th commandment. Thou shall not drink thou church's holy water to hydrate thyself. And Crosby has now logged on, which is welcomed, but it's bad news for Raccoon Boy as there's only room for four. I thank him for his services today, and then naturally I have to kill him, but the problem is, which one is the real Stealth Omato? It's virtually impossible to tell. Luckily, this isn't my first raccoon killing, and I simply read their gamer tags and put down Mr. Zypher. Good night, sweet prince. Wow, this is kind of sad, but look at all this weed. This is how World War II ended. The Allies simply sent a bunch of weed to the Germans, and they smoked it and all died. We are not the makers of history, we are made by history. We've even got staff now, like this guy who sprays the weed with Ajax spray and wipe, and this is crucial for growth. We all stand around him, and there's sort of a sexual vibe in the air which is warmly welcomed. I'm not so sure about this guy though. He seems to be pretending to smoke a joint, and I'm just not on board with that. Alright, so it will take a bit longer for the plants to fully grow, so I decide to enjoy a nice flight in my deluxo, then bam. This server has hit level 10 toxicity. You can't do anything without an unloved child shooting a heat-seeking missile at you, so we decide to engage in a wholesome activity. A pool party with the boys boys boys. I get into my swimming attire, but obviously the pants, shoes, and business socks stay on. God's watching. Also, my house has this dumb design where there's no path to the backyard, so you have to walk through the plants. It's basically deforestation and wow, Stealth Omato just has to ruin my pool party. We do eventually kick things off, and I think this may be the straightest pool party bash that's ever been had. Just a bunch of bros giggling and splashing around in the sun. I purchased this house because it was the most expensive on the market, but this patio is lackluster I must say, so we decide to find a better spot to swim. There's nothing classier than swimming at a country club, so we head down there. This is what the boys and I needed, as even drug dealers need to relax and get some vitamin D every now and again. We even race some golf carts around. Well, Crosby is clearly in a commercial sedan because there was only three golf carts, but if you could use your imagination, that would be very appreciated. It begs the question though, what's the only thing more gangster than four shirtless pasty white guys driving around in electric powered caddies? That's right, mopeds. Stealtho Carbo introduces us to the glorious way of the moped. This is also great as it fits our budget. Like seriously, we as a group are dirt poor right now. That being said, these mopeds do have their uses. Mark this date in your calendar as the glorious moped booty carnage of 2020. This may be the most glorious thing I've ever been a part of in my entire life. You've also got to appreciate how fast Thick Man's arm is at slashing his machete. The athleticism of the man is awe-inspiring, and quite frankly, this may be the pinnacle of my channel. But then, we dare to dream. 
the double moped slash and dash. The little engine of this sucker can barely move us forward, but if this isn't motivating you to achieve your life goals, I frankly don't know what will. When America put a man on the moon, an entire nation applauded. But when the boys and I rode mopeds on the beach, the entire world looked at each other and realized that we're all the same on the inside and world peace was achieved. Okay, we've become incredibly distracted, so we decide to do some repo jobs to make a little pocket money. Needless to say, repo just isn't our forte. Mato somehow broke not only his helicopter, but also the spare. Whatever, the weed is probably grown now, but before we leave the city, I have a problem that needs fixing. So this is my garage. Most of the cars are just the free ones you can get, but I won this at the casino ages ago, and I want to fix it up. I really want a yellow street car, and so I do my absolute best to customize the Rapid GT, pouring about $80,000 into it, and it looks like a piece of crap. I don't know what it is about this car, but I hate it. I suppose this is what parents feel like when they give birth to a ginger. We trash the car because it's disgusting, but neither of us actually explode it because we don't want to pay the insurance premium. If you could just imagine a cool explosion, that'd be great. Balling on a budget. I instead decide to customize the OG Elegy, and it winds up looking pretty nice. Finally, we can go and 420 blaze our way to a better future, or more likely an early grave. Finally, the plants are fully grown, and now this place is looking ready to go. Also, for clarification, when I was at school, our health teacher told us that weed would kill us, and my mates and I have been memeing that ever since. No joke, he also unironically pronounced it marijuana, and so now we all do that as well for a laugh. I'm going to need you to use your imaginations again here and pretend these regular cigarettes are joints. More importantly, it's now complete. We are now true blue American weed farmers. Only $16,500 worth of product so far, which literally gives me clinical depression, but hey, at least we're not selling this stuff directly to children. Although that could actually be quite lucrative. Anyway, thanks for watching, you absolute legends, and a massive thanks to those who support the channel on Patreon. Until next time, and as always, stay classy.